Thank you for joining in to my YouTube channel. And in today's video, we will configure Windows Site Aware clustering feature in the lab. And we will also talk about the various options uh, during the failover and VM placement rules in this configuration. So let's quickly jump into the lab and let's see what is Site Aware feature. So this is a typical Site Aware setup where we have two different sites, site one and two. And on the left hand side, we have a few set of cluster nodes running. And on the other side also, we have two nodes. So these, all the nodes are part of the common cluster, but they are kept on a different geographical location. And on the same, on the same time, we have some node five and six, which is actually the storage box, which are also placed on each site. So in this diagram, we are using scalar files server cluster, which is SOFS. Uh, it could be a SAN device as well, which could be doing the SAN replication from site one and two. So let's understand how this site of a feature will work. If I have a VM running on site one and its storage is also coming from site one storage box, then it is all good. We will get the best output. However, if the VM running on node 1 or 2 moves to node 3 and 4, which is on the other side, in that case, we might not get the best throughput from the VM because now it has to access the storage over the VAN and then going to the site 1 storage box. This will create a huge bottleneck in the VM performance. Similarly, if my storage is running is my vm storage is coming from site one and if i create a new virtual machine and put it on you know, site two then again it will create a huge bottleneck so we can manually move the virtual machines here and there and we can fix this however it becomes a huge challenge when you are running around hundreds of vms in a cluster and lots of csvs or shares which are currently managed so in that case you can leverage site of a feature which which can leverage these feature and which can help you place the VMs accordingly. So let's uh, take a look at the lab. Let's see what is the lab looks like. We will configure each of these site awareness and we'll do some testing as well. So this is the lab. Uh, this is the cluster what what I have created. I've got node A and B, host A and B. Okay, And currently I have two virtual machines with to say similar name A and B and also in CSV we have got um, CSV A and CSV B okay um, I'll just move this CSV A to its respective site okay so now each CSVs are on, on these respective site uh, host A and B and these are the virtual machines running Let's pull up the PowerShell and let's see if we have any fault domain created as of now. So in this output, we'll see that it has host A and B. However, we do not have any parent name or the location or the children name as well. So we do not see any fault domain yet created. So let's first go ahead and, and create a site, um, which is uh, site A. Okay. And we'll get some uh, description name and the location name as well. So the command line is like new hyphen cluster fault domain. So this is the main command line. And I'm going to create a site with a name which is site A. And you can create, uh, you know, any site with any name. That's per your as per your requirement. And the type is the site. So I'm telling cluster that I'm creating a fault domain of site type. This is the type which I'm creating. In the description, you can uh, put in the information as per your requirement, but here I have put in as primary. This is gonna be my primary data center. And the location is gonna be site A data center. So in this uh, location uh, parameter, you can also mention the address of the database or the building or anything of that sort. Similarly for site B as well, uh, we have created a fault domain of type site. Description becomes secondary. And the location can be anything as per your requirement. So we will run these two commands to create the fault domain. Okay, so now since we have created the fault domains, let's again take a look at the same command we ran previously. So now you see that 
here I've got two site names. These are my fault domains and under location also I've got the location information for these two sites. Along with that we have got host name as well. Previously this was not here. So now we have created two sites but we have not tagged any host to, to these two sites. So cluster only knows that we have got two sites but, but cluster doesn't know which host belong to which site. So we need to tell the you know cluster uh, using these commandlets. So let's first go through with the first line. It says set cluster fault domain and the name of the node which, which you want to set and you have to tell the parent name. This is going to be my site name. So let's go ahead and run this command. And for site B as well, I'm picking host B for parent site B. So I'll run this command as well. Okay. Now I've created the site. I've tagged host A to site A and host B to site B. Now if we quickly look into the cluster UI, you will see here that these sites are now visible in the UI. It was not there previously. So now cluster understand that host A belongs to a site called site A and host B belongs to a site which is of site B name. So far we have configured the site of a clustering but now we have to also tag the csvs so cluster is not aware which csvs are coming from which site so let's go ahead and take an example of csv so this is one of the csvs that i have let me show you the csv as well csv1 okay and it is currently owned by host a and it's on host b so cluster doesn't does not know if csv a is coming from site a or site b so we have to tell it so let's go ahead and first run this command let's see what is the output looks looks like so here you you will see that the preferred site is blank so this has not been set yet so this is exactly what we're going to do we're going to run the next command. We will pull the information of CSV A and then we will set the preferred site as site A. And similarly with site B as well. Okay. So let me go ahead and first run this command. This is site A which I have already tagged. And now I'm going to set auto failback type to 1. I'll explain this in a bit. And I'll do the same thing for CSV 2 as well. Okay. So now let's again run this previous command. So let's see if my site is now tagged. So here you will see the preferred site is set to site A. And if I change this and if I run this for CSV B, you will see that the preferred site is site B. So now cluster knows that these two hosts belongs to their respective site. Cluster also knows that CSV A and CSV B belongs to a certain site. Now, all it needs to do, it needs to place these virtual machines to their respective site. So let's come back to that diagram. So I've told the cluster that node five and six are part of you know, site one. So node five and six are SOFS storage node name. So uh, don't get confused. Consider this as a CSV. So CSV five and six part of site 1 and node 1 and 2 as per this diagram belongs to site B sorry site A similarly in site 2 as well I have informed the cluster that these two nodes are part of site 2 and these are the CSVs which belongs to site 2 so now cluster is fully aware now the best part about the site aware feature is if or someone migrates one of the virtual machine from site 1 to site two nodes but it does not migrate the virtual storage so vm running on site two but its storage is coming from site one so if this configuration happens and if you have configured the site of your feature in cluster cluster will automatically detect this mismatch and it will automatically pull the virtual machines back to site a to this local site so it is now orchestrated, it is automated, 
so you don't have to manually check which VM running on which node and its corresponding storage site. So all these things can be managed automatically. Now, if you talk about the failover scenario, so now all the virtual machines running to their respective site and to their respective storage site as well, everything is good. Now, if one of the site completely goes down, so site two is completely down, its CSVs, of course, will be failed over to site one and all the cluster resources will be failed over to site one as well. So after that, if site two comes back up online, what will happen? Cluster will automatically detect that my site two is up and it knows that the CSVs which were previously running on site 2 has now come to site 1 due to the failover but it will automatically move those CSV back to site 2. Now since those CSV is kind of moved to site 2 all the virtual machines running on those CSVs will be migrated back to site 2 as well. So the biggest advantage is that after the DR all these automations are done by the cluster itself. You do not have to manually move those CSVs manually from one side to another, and then you don't have to manually move the virtual machine from side one to side two. All these things are automated, and this is the PowerShell commandlet which, which does the magic. Auto failback type one. So it will wait for the site to come up, once it sees that my site is now live, the CSV will be moved back to its original site. And once the CSV is moved, all the VHDs, all the VMs who, which, which were there on that CSV will also be migrated back to its original site. So this is the best part of it. Second thing that if I migrate or if I drain node one on site one cluster, knows that virtual machine is running on node 1 belongs to site 1 so it will automatically place all the virtual machines to node 2. So you just need to make sure that you have enough capacity on a given site when there's a node drain happening it can accommodate all the resources on other nodes. So even if node 1 goes completely down it will first try to pu push all the virtual machines all the loads on the site 1 nodes. And if it doesn't find one, then only it will move the virtual machines to site two. So as long as you have capacity available on, on a given site, and if one node goes down, or if you have to drain the node and reboot that particular node, all the resources running on that site will continue to run on the same site, but migrated on a different host. So this will not impact the virtual machine uh, performance. Virtual machines will always be you know, accessing the local storage and it will enhance the overall performance of it. So that's it. So these are the settings we wanted to talk about. And if you want to see uh, any other topic, you want to uh, discuss any other topic, just drop me on the comment box. I'll definitely try to reply. And if possible, I can also make a video. So subscribe to my channel, give it a thumbs up and see you soon. Thank you.